Welcome to Mr. Fisher Flips, third grade math. Our lesson today is looking at unit five, and we're going to be reviewing what we've learned in this chapter. As we look back, we can see that we've been practicing learning how to work with real world problem solving and situations that we've come across. Well, our review and test will be going over some of the materials that we've looked at in this unit. We'll look at the assessment and how we can review those items that will help us understand how to do those two-step word problems. And we'll look at some vocabulary as we look at equations and add-ins and things that will help us do better on the test. Our homework is actually just two pages long. It will be coming home tomorrow, Tuesday. When this comes home, you need to make sure that you do these 10 problems. Well, let's look at vocabulary first, because if we look at our three questions here, we have more than three vocabulary words. Let's look at expression and equation and try to understand what the two of those mean. Let's go to the E's, and if we look at an equation first of all, we know that an equation is a mathematical sentence with an equal sign. So what is an expression? An expression is a combination of numbers, but it does not have an equal sign. That's the main difference is an expression doesn't have an equal sign. Well, let's remind you what an add-in is. An add-in is two or more numbers that are added together find a sum. The add-ins are the two numbers that we add together, and that equals the sum. Well, there's sum. We don't even have to look that one up. What's a product? Do you remember what a product is? The product is when you multiply two factors, you get the answer. The answer is the product in multiplication. Let's look at one of these problems. I was going to look at Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson set up some chairs in rows. He put the same number in each row, each of seven rows, and put seven chairs in the last row. He set up 70 chairs. How many did he put in each of the seven rows? First of all, we need to figure out he put the same number in each of the seven rows plus seven in the last row. So we need to find out how many that is. If we take 70, subtract seven, what do we get? we get 63. Did he, if we take that 7 now, we take that number 63 and divide it by 7 rows, we should find out how many he put in each of the 7 rows. 7 times what equals 63? 9. 9 times 7 is 63. So how many did he put in each of the 7 rows? He put 9 chairs in each of the 7 rows. Explain how to write an equation and solve the problem. Well first of all we need to make sure this is first. So our equation should be 70 minus 7, and we put that in parentheses, divided by 7 equals 9. To do this correctly, we need to put that as an N or a box to make it a full equation. And then we can come over here and we can say N or the box equals nine, nine chairs. That is our full equation. We took the number in each row minus seven that we put in the last row and then we divided by seven rows and we got the unknown number and that equaled nine. Well let's look at Becky. Becky has 20 fish, seven hamsters, and there are eight angelfish and the rest are goldfish. She gets a number more goldfish. She now has 19 goldfish. How many goldfish did she get? Do we need to know the hamsters if we need to find out the goldfish? No, we can actually cross out the hamsters. We don't need that information. But do we need to know how many angelfish there are? We do. Let's see if we can take this number, 20, 20 fish. And how many angelfish were there? We could actually do that as a sum and some more problem. Has this many and how many more does he need? Total was 20 fish. And how many angelfish? Eight. Put it down here as an equation. We have 20 take away eight. And that gives us our answer. 20 minus eight is 12. She gets a number more goldfish. She now has 19 goldfish. Well, now what? We take 20 minus eight and that equals 12 goldfish. Do we add? Do we subtract? We actually have to subtract, but we have to take this 19, right? So we can't take a plus. Let's erase that. We really need to have that answer put over into this equation, 19 minus n. And that gives us the number of goldfish. So we take 19 minus 12 and we get seven goldfish. Pretty easy if we just follow through with it. Well, question number 10 is an extended response. Jason has 452 toy dinosaurs in his collection. His sister gave him 38 more. So if we take 452 and we add 38, what is our answer going to be? 
2 plus 8 is 10, 9, 490. And he sold the number of them, and now he has 418. So we need to take 490 minus 418. And what is our answer? How many did he sell? 10 minus 8 is 2. I borrowed from the 9. That becomes an 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. 4 minus 4 is 0. That's the first part. We now know how many he sold. Now let's change color and we need to explain how you can decide if this is reasonable. One way you can do this is to estimate. 452 is closest to 450. 38 is closest to 40 and that equals 490 minus 420. 9 minus 2 is 7. Is 72 a reasonable answer with our estimate? Yes. So is our answer reasonable? Yes, it is. Explain because finish this sentence so I know that you've done it correctly. Well, this is actually a challenge question. If you'd like to do this, community garden was planted and they had to find out the number of tomatoes that were planted. So you have to write an equation to represent the problem. The challenge comes when could you write an equation for the problem up above using other operations than the ones you used. Explain why or why not. So challenge it's just a challenge question to see if you can solve a real world problem. Well this brings us to the end of the lesson. When and where did you watch the video? Sum up what you saw. You can say this was a review of Unit 5. Write one question that you've watched during the video. Maybe you have a question on how to do something correctly. This brings us to the end of our lesson and remember to have a great day. Study hard.